Hey everyone, this is Mr. Z and welcome to this floor plan tutorial using AutoCAD 2018. If you're new to the software or need a refresher, this is probably the tutorial for you. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'd like you to do is first open up AutoCAD and start a new file. And you should be looking at an interface that looks similar to mine. Now you might be on the 3D tools and we want to switch that. We want to switch over to the drafting tools. So down here, I want you to switch your workspace by clicking on that arrow and going to drafting and annotation. Once you've done so, you should notice that your toolbar on the top has switched the arrangement of tools. And then I would like you to click in this area here. This is your workspace and I'd like you to press escape once just so it's active. And I want you to type in units or unit. And you'll notice a quick bar pops up and the option of units shows up and you can just click on that or move down with the, uh, the directional pad on the keyboard and select that. And when working with traditional drafting, we tend to want to stay in millimeters. So I'm going to switch over to millimeters and we tend to want the precision to be one of the first three. In this case, I'm going to just have it be at zero just because I am working in millimeters and then I'm gonna press OK. So our units have been switched. Next, we're going to want to initialize a few things by creating some layers. So go to the layer properties, and in this open space over here, I want you to right click on it and go to new layer, and we're just gonna add in some layers. And we're gonna start with the most basic layer and probably the most important layer, but those are your dimensions. Okay, then right click on that space again, new layer. This will be your doors. Right click, new layer. This will be your windows. Right click, new layer. And this will be your walls. Okay, and for each of them, I'd like you to specify a color. And usually for dimensions, I go with a green color for doors. I tend to go with a more reddish color. And for windows, I tend to go with a more blue color. Okay, and that's this personal preference. I tend to keep my walls white. And then once you've done all that, we can go ahead and press the X to close out of that. Okay. And before we begin drawing, there's a few things I want you to make sure you have ready to go. One is make sure that your ortho mode is turned on. What ortho mode is going to allow you to do is draw in solely 90 degree angles. So if I was drawing a line, you'll notice that I could draw the line horizontally or I could draw it vertically. However, if I turn off ortho mode, then I have free control over the line and where it gets placed. Additionally, we want to make sure that our object snap settings are on so click on this arrow over here and then go over to your object snap settings and depending on what you've been working on certain ones might be off or on so I'm just going to go ahead right now and clear all of these and I'm just going to turn on a couple I'm going to turn on my endpoint my midpoint my center and let's do the intersections as well and these are just different connectors that it will allow me to connect to. And you'll kind of see these in play as we're progressing with this. So I'm going to press OK. And other than that, we might want to adjust our grid spacing to adjust, adjust the spacing of the grids. If you go to this arrow over here and then go to where it says Snap Settings, you can pull up your spacing for your X and your Y direction, as well as the grid X and Y spacing. So for example, if I want there to be five major lines, major lines being these darker lines over here, and I want there to be a spacing of let's say 10 millimeters between them, that means each will have 50 millimeters total going in that direction. And for the snap spacing, let's just go ahead and set this over to five. So 5, 5, 10, 10, 5, like that, which means our mouse will kind of move in five point increments. 
I'm going to press OK. And just to show you that this thing is now equal to 50, I'm going to use the line tool. So I'll just type in line, press Enter. And when I draw this out, if you look at that number, and let me go ahead and turn my ortho mode back on, you'll notice that reaching to the end here is 50. Okay, I think we're ready to draw in our exterior walls. So what I'd like you to do is zoom out a lot so you can see all your grids and make sure you have a lot of millimeters in there. And we're going to start by using the poly line. So P line, enter, and then we're going to draw out a line. And let's go ahead and say this wall is going to be 10,000 millimeters. Then we're going to go up. So I'm moving the mouse up a total of 12,000 millimeters. Then I'm going to go to the side here, another 10,000. And then I'm just going to go down and connect it like so. Once you've done that with the P-line or polyline tool, this should all be selectable. So we're going to use the offset command, OFF for offset, enter. And we're going to specify a distance, let's say 300 millimeters, enter. And then we're going to select the object and move outside. Uh, alternatively, if you moved inside, you can see how the offset kind of offsets to the interior walls. So I'm going to click that once, and then I'm going to press Escape a few times so that that saves itself. Okay, let's go ahead and add in some interior walls now. So what I'd like you to do first is go over to your object snap settings, and I would like you to select all of them on, and this is just going to help snap things into place. Press OK, and we're going to draw inside here the basics of the walls. So use the line tool enter and it doesn't really matter where just on one of these walls I would like you to draw a line and we're gonna make that line 5,000 enter and then we're going to close it off to one of the walls like that we're gonna do the same line at the bottom over here you know draw in a wall and then connect it like so and then we're going to take this area here and do it a few more times to create some other room sizes. So let's go up here. A total of 3,000. Enter. And I'm going to connect that one to here. Press escape. And then lastly, I'm going to create two more interior rooms. So I'm going to use the line here and draw a line, a total of 4,000. And then connect this one to over here. So it's going to look something like that. And now we're going to go ahead and adjust this. And to do that, I just want you to press escape a few times, click on a line and then click on the end point. And when you do that, you should be able to see the distance of the line. So this line's 4260. If you press the tab command, you'll see you have the ability to adjust that. And we're gonna change this one over to, let's say 4300 and press enter. And that's just a slight adjust there, as you can tell. You can press escape times a few times and then use the move command, move, enter, select that line, enter. And then you could click on the endpoint and snap it into place like so. So we made that room 4300. We're going to do the same there. So I'm going to go ahead, press tab, 4300, enter, zoom in, press escape a few times, and then use the move command, enter, select that, enter, to move this one into place as well. Okay. In terms of this room over here, we're going to use the trim command, trim, enter, select that, both lines, enter, and then we're going to trim that off. So that is gone. And then we're going to go ahead and just create some interior walls. So use the offset tool, offset, enter, and the distance is going to be 150. Since these are interior walls, they're going to be thinner, enter. I'm just going to click on each wall and kind of move out with it like that, like that, like that. 
so on and so forth. Okay, so for those of you who can't see it yet, this is the entrance of the house. And you kind of enter from here. These are going to be two bedrooms. This is going to be a living area, a kitchen, and a bathroom. Okay, so we've drawn all those in place. And now all we have to do is adjust the lines by clicking on them, extending them into place. And then we're going to trim off all the excess after we're done this process. And I found that this is a very effective way of designing things and worrying less about dimensions as you kind of go through the entire process. So everything looks good. We're going to use one final trim command to select the entire thing. Press Enter. And you just need to now go through and crop out all the excess overlap. Okay, like so. So there you go. Those are the interior walls and the exterior walls, and we're going to continue this in part two. I'll see you then. Peace.